Okay, um, tonight we'll still continue Muksa. The next days we'll learn about Tisha B'Av. Anyway, so we're learning about what's called Kele Shemalach things that are primarily used for forbidden things. So the last thing we were discussing were timers, things like that. We got into a whole discussion about timers. But, for instance, scissors, regular scissors, are what's called Kele Shemalach because they're made normally to cut paper. Cutting paper on Shabbos is not allowed. Or uh, sewing scissors, or nail clippers, or scissors to cut nails, because of all those things you're not allowed to do on Shabbos. So therefore, it's what's called keli shmalach til isit. You're only allowed to move it if you want to do something permissible with it, or you need the place that it's on. So I'll give you an example. We discussed this in the past. You're allowed to open a package of food on Shabbos as long as you destroy the bag, and you're not going to cut any letters. So what happens if you have a bag of food, whatever it may be, and you want to open it for Shabbos? Now we learned you cannot just open it by separating the top, which is glued together, because that's called tearing without ruining it. You're not ruining it, because it's still a full bag as it was before. What you could do is you can cut it with a knife. But sometimes cutting it with a knife, you can end up cutting letters. So if you want to cut it, and according to many opinions, regardless, you can use the scissors. Some people say if only if the scissors would be the easiest thing to use. You can take a scissors, which normally is moktza, and you can cut the bag open with it. You're allowed to cut the bag open with it. Or you got a package, whatever, and you want to t- cut the string, and the easiest accessible thing is to use the scissors. So, halachically, you would be allowed to use the scissors because that's called seder kufa. You're doing something permissible with it, and that would be allowed. Now, sometimes you have scissors, what are they called? Poultry shears. They have scissors to cut chicken with it. So, those are not moks at all because they're made to cut chicken, which you're allowed to do on Shabbos. So such scissors are not at all moksa on Shabbos. So therefore, you can just use them whenever you want. You, know, you can open a package on Shabbos? You can open it whatever package. Let's say, first of all, if you came on Shabbos, for sure you don't. If you came on Shabbos, well, generally speaking, you cannot open it. Somebody called me with an interesting question today. I'm not, say, I'm sorry, I'm not saying who it is, so it doesn't matter. He got a delivery on Shabbos from eBay. Okay? Uh, he was in his house, he didn't know it came. But a guest came to the house and he said, there's a package by your door. He didn't want to bring it in the Shabbos. Okay, so anyway, uh, after Shabbos, the package was stolen. Now on Shabbos, afterwards, the package was stolen. He called up eBay that he said, I, I you know, I didn't uh, get it. So they gave him, they said something like this. If you sign a piece of paper, by the way, the guest told his wife that it arrived. So in other words, it arrived. <laughs> but he didn't bring it in, and then it got stolen. Okay? So then the question is, so now they want him to sign a paper that it, it, the paper said like this. It didn't arrive even though the tracking said it did arrive. If he signs that paper, it didn't arrive, even though the tracking said it did arrive, so then he could get the refund. If he doesn't sign the paper, he can't get the refund. Is he allowed to sign that paper? No. No. on a doorstep, not in his house. Huh? Anyway, the thing was, it was an exp- it was like a $275 package. Okay, we'll leave it at that. Hey, what's the hetter? What's the hetter? What's the, what's the, the hetter yeah. didn't pay me enough. <laughs> Wait, was he allowed to take it in his house? <laughs> One sec, we're not learning, well, we are learning Hel Hashanah. <laughs> There's a few issues with the pa- First of all, halachically, I told him, listen. You can't sign the paper because it did arrive. You know that it arrived. Your wife knows that it arrived. And you were told it was arrived. You can't, you know, if they say, I didn't get it, that's not a, f- a lie because he didn't get it. But it, they, they didn't want him that. They wanted him to write, to sign a paper, it didn't arrive. So he's, 
So, okay, but anyway, no, it's a from it, it's a... The GPS tracker also said it right. Huh? The tracker, also, the tracking number also said it right. Whatever, the eBay, whatever it was. It, it, That's what I'm saying, they have, they they have that. Also. They probably have a picture of it. Anyway, but, so the question is like this, one second. Can you bring a package into the house on shopping? So first of all, he doesn't live in L.A. So, you know, it's where he lives, there's no air of anyway. So it depends. If you're allowed to carry on your porch, then he's, there's even what to think about. If he doesn't, if he's not allowed to carry on his porch, let's say it's an open porch, and then, and then you know, so then you're not allowed to carry on the porch. You can't bring stuff it's from the porch into the house. It depends. That's what I'm saying. If you're allowed to carry on the porch, huh? what? Yeah, but if it's from a Carmelist to Rosh Hashanah and inside, then you wouldn't be allowed to do it. Whatever. Then there's another issue. Then the issue is, is the package muktzah? Now, if the package is muktzah, like we're learning here, even if, let's say, uh, let's say he got an iPhone. Okay, let's say the package was an iPhone. Okay? Now, why does he want to bring it in? Not to do something permissible with it. He doesn't want it to get stolen. So based on the dinam we're learning now, you wouldn't be allowed to bring it in anyway. Unless he wants to kick it in. Okay? But, one sec, but if, if it, it's muksa, so then it's tzarech it's atzme. It's not, it's a gufi mekayme. And you can't create, what is it going to, you can't create. Not for the iPhone. Why not for the iPhone? Well, but you can't open it. I want my door porch No, clean. no, no, it doesn't work. Of course, why not? That it's not that doesn't work. I want my porch clean. You don't need the place. That's, the, that's the same case as the car. It's not the case with the car where you're holding on to the car door. You want the chair from the timeline? No, the car door the is chair. different. They put it on the chair. Hey, the there, you need the place to go the into door. the car. Here, you don't need the place. You don't need the place in the porch. And then there's another issue. There's another issue. If the goods came outside the tchum, outside the tchum. Of Shabbos, which without getting the either 2,000 Amis, 12,000 12, Amis, whatever, if, if it comes out to the Tchum, then regardless it's Moksa. So then, but you can assume halachically, this is what they say today, you can assume halachically that if it came today, that means it already arrived in the city yesterday. I mean, already uh, before Shabbos. So it didn't come Chutz Tchum on Shabbos. But anyway, it's, it's, not, it's not just a simple thing. But let's say, let's say somebody got a pair of shoes or they got a sweater. Yeah? And there's no question, let's say, of carrying on the porch. Let's say they're allowed to carry on the porch, right? Into the house. And then, uh, so sweater's not muktzah. The question is, did it come outside the tchum or out, inside the tchum? So if it came from inside the tchum, then technically it's not moksa. The only question is how to open the package. You have to, it's not so simple how to open the package. You have to destroy it. it it's a whole story. It's not so simple. Bringing in packages from, from inside. You can kick it in, but uh, again, it does, opening it is not so simple. Huh? No, no, I'm saying if it's moksa, something. The problem with opening it, it's No, I'm saying sweater is not muksa. I'm saying if it would be something that would be muksa, chutz or tchum, you can kick it in. Huh? What's there to kick? It's a shinui. But you can't do it to the full floor, not to protect it from the fat, fat, kick it. You could. Muksa, that, that's, muksa that's, that's uh, you're doing it. We're going to learn later the different categories. Kalachayad or shinui. You know, if it's sometimes if it's for the mux itself, it is mux. It's not not you know whatever. But some you basically be allowed to kick it in. What? Then you should cut it on Shabbos below the ziplock. Yeah, because when you cut that top, you're not ruining it. On the contrary, that's what it's made to open and close. So you have to cut it below the ziplock that you can't use it as the intention. One minute. What, no, so what did you want? You, Kevin. Yeah, so um, uh, 
And use regular scissors to cut chicken. If you want to make it flashic. <laughs> if it's cold it's chicken, chicken. Why, why, yeah, you can use regular scissors to cut chicken. Because again, then you're using it for something permissible to do. And the question is, you might ruin your scissors, but uh, yeah. To what? Yeah. Chip, uh, what did you call this good word? Chip clips, yeah. Clips are not muks on Shabbos. In fact, we'll come to soon. Paper clips are not muks on Shabbos. You can use a paper clip to put a few people, pieces of paper together for a marker, but the staple, stapler is muks. It's not a problem. You can use those clips. You're not doing anything. You're just closing it. By the way, but, the, the problem with the open packages, what? if you package on Shabbos, some muksa and some not, can I assume that the one that did arrive is not muksa? Or you're ordering like an iPhone and a sweater, but you don't know which one came. One of them came, but you don't know which From one came. Store, you can't, sure you can't see, first of all, one comes in a box, one iPhone. comes in a bag. I mean, come on. Whatever it's muksa, it doesn't have to be an iPhone. Something big that's not muksa and something that's big that is muksa. If Suffolk muksa is, is lochumra or lokula. The Rabbanan. So books is been Rabbanan, so Suffolk is muttered. It's only rabbinically forbidden. It's rabbinically forbidden, and it's, it's so Suffolk is muttered. Could he have a couple of guests? That's right. I what? Could he have a couple of guests? His guest was Jewish. Um, well, what do you mean? It says that they arrived, it says just bring it in. No, if you can't bring it in, you can't tell the Jew to bring it in. Okay. The, the problem with opening the package, even if it arrives on Friday and you forgot to open it, on Shabbos to open it is the same problem if it arrives on Shabbos or Friday, right? Well, then if it arrives to your house on Friday, you know for sure it didn't come chus yeah. But if it's moksa, it's moksa. Exactly. So okay, next. Tefillin, according to most opinion, is a keli shemalachta le'isr. You know how to wear tefillin on Shabbos, mm. right? So therefore, tefillin are moksa. So therefore, if you, let's say you have tefillin on a shelf. Let's say you left, somebody left a tefillin on the table. So if you need the place on the table, then you're allowed to pick up the tefillin and move them away. If you don't need the place for the table, you have to leave the tefillin there because you're not, move, you're not allowed to move it. Only to go for mekayme. What? Kick it, no. Now, there's a, cases, what happens if you find tefillin in the street? and they're being defiled, then sometimes, if you can't move it in another way, you're allowed to actually put them on, without a bracha, and, and wear them. But that's unique, then you have to take them off as soon as you come to a, res you know, a place that would be respectable, and so on. What? So that you'd be allowed to. Okay, let's say you have a thousand film together. Talus costs, the value would take hundred dollars. Film costs, let's say, two thousand each. Okay. <laughs> so let's say you have two pairs of filling. You know, you, have the, you know, you have two pairs of filling and a thousand. A thousand worth hundred dollars, and and the filling are worth four thousand dollars. Yes. Now the bag of the thousand film is what's called a base. For moksa and non moksa. The talus is not moksa. We're going to learn more about that in moksa. And, but the tefillin are moksa. Correct? So now, would I be allowed to pick up that bag? So the answer is in, in the law of basis, what's called basis in Hebrew, if the moksa, I'm sorry, if the non moksa, the non moksa, is more valuable to you at the present, more than the moksa is, then you would be allowed to move the whole thing together. Right now on Shabbos, what's more valuable to you? The talis, because it's phone you don't want. You can't pair them anyway. So then in that case, I mean, that's the best thing. The best thing is to make sure before Shabbos to take it out. But let's say you're thousand for a sling on the table, and all you have to do is open the zipper and pull out your talis. That's for sure not an issue, because you're not even moving the bag. 
But let's say the bag is in a, a drawer and you have to pick up the bag to, to get it out. So again, you would be allowed to because the, right now the talus is more valuable than the, than the tefillin. Same scenario if you have your mobile phone. What? Same scenario if you have your mobile phone. In there. If you have your mobile phone in your talus bag, you would be allowed to move it for the same reason. Because right now, the talus is more valuable than... I'm not saying this is the best way of doing it, but I'm saying if this is the fact, you would be allowed to move it because right now the talus is more valuable than the phone. What? We're going to get the purse soon. I mean, not now.